It blankets three quarters of our planet's surface. Water, the key to life on Earth. We take our water for granted. It's always been there. We think it always will. Yet in many parts of the nation, supplies of high quality water are dangerously low. Our natural waters are increasingly threatened by the waste, the runoff of our industrial civilization. Modern agriculture is one of the problems from the Everglades to the Chesapeake Bay to the San Francisco Bay. Many of our waterways are overburdened with nutrients like phosphorus, as well as pesticides and herbicides, which seep into these ecosystems from nearby farms. These areas have been recycling human pollution for a long time, and until recently, they've been able to handle most of it. For nature itself has ways, ingenious ways, of absorbing, using what we call waste. This community of algae takes in phosphorus to build its tissues, just as crops do on nearby farms. When algae grows in moderation, it supports the life of the marsh, providing food for hundreds of other organisms and a chemical environment where they can flourish. But when there's too much phosphorus, there's too much algae. It takes over. Other life forms can't compete. As a result, the rich diversity of these ecosystems is steadily ebbing away. One solution is to take over developed land nearby and turn it back into marsh, letting the phosphorus accumulate, as in a watery dump. But that eliminates jobs, homes, and farms, and it still doesn't get rid of the phosphorus. What to do? Man has always been good at challenging nature transforming it with feats of technical ingenuity. But as our problems become harder to solve, maybe it's time to stop defying nature and learn to listen to her. For millions of years, without our help, nature maintained a balance on this planet. If we can understand how complex ecosystems work naturally, it may hold the answer to restoring and maintaining them over time. For lurking in the phenomenal growth rate of this hardy survivor is another solution, one with enormous and very exciting implications. Bit by bit, the scientific community has been piecing together the intricate interdependence of ecosystems as they focus on understanding complex biological interactions in the wild. But to exercise more control over their experiments, scientists at the Smithsonian Institution's Marine Systems Laboratory pioneered the practice of recreating living ecosystems for research and public education. Their models range from a Caribbean coral reef to an Everglades system with a thousand species, all functioning naturally. But each model presented the same problem, how to maintain a natural balance without using chemicals. All closed systems where water can't circulate in and out build up pollutants or excess nutrients at night when the plants can't photosynthesize and take them in. To solve the problem, the scientists look to the most efficient consumer of nutrients on Earth, algae which has been consuming pollution as food for over two billion years. They developed a device called an algal turf scrubber, a shallow trough with a plastic screen which provides a stable surface for a healthy community of algae. As it grows, the algae scrubs or removes the nutrients from the water and refreshes it with oxygen. Every week or so, the algae is harvested. This process has been used very successfully for many years on a wide variety of models, maintaining sparkling, pure environments for life. But from the beginning, it was obvious there were far broader applications. As in the Smithsonian ecosystems, these large-scale scrubbers use a diverse community of algae 
providing predictable, stable performance year-round in a variety of climates. But this time, the trough is longer than a football field and slightly tilted, so gravity moves the water along the screens. A surging device enhances the algal growth. Flowing water is critical to the optimum production of algae, as is light, here from the sun. Growing at more than 10 times the rate of traditional crops, the harvested algae, rich in protein, provides an important source of food or nutrients for crops, fish, animals, and one day for human consumption. The algae is a miraculous material. Its many filaments actually trap particulates because the surface is very sticky. The algae directly absorbs nutrients such as ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, phosphorus, and many other pollutants. And as it photosynthesizes, the algae produces pure oxygen in abundance, providing a critical element for aquatic life and for the breakdown of many toxic compounds, the list of which is growing almost as fast as researchers can test them. Here in the Everglades, another experiment on a sugar farm proved that algal turf scrubbing would eliminate excess phosphorus far more efficiently than artificial marsh areas set aside to capture and store this nutrient. In fact, when the results of experiments with algal turf scrubbing are compared with competing technologies, ATS is seen to be a hundred to a thousand times more effective. In general, for a wide variety of water cleanup needs, it can be seen that this eco-technology can meet most requirements at a fraction of the cost, both in dollars and impact on people. All of this from a simple process that's been happening naturally for billions of years. Understanding an ecosystem as a whole, greater than the sum of its parts taking the energy from the sun, flowing water, recycling elements, using what nature has taught us to solve one of the most critical problems facing us today.